Hi, this is ACC legend and Clemson Hall of Famer Grayson Marshall Jr. And you're listening to The Final Score with Stevie Fly. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the final score with Matthew and Stevie Fly. What's up, guys? The final score is back again. We're live this week, and uh, we got we got some just a smorgasbord, if you, big word of the day smorgasbord of NFL information this week. And uh, now spell it. Now spell it. Heck no, I can't spell it. <laughs> we were we we were talking about doing a uh, NFL top five uh, touchdown celebration, but we're 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 not going to do that tonight. We're going to save that one. Yeah, I know that's what the title is up here, but uh, we're going to save that. We're just going to talk what's going on in the NFL because there's a lot of news going on. With me, as always, is my buddy, my partner in crime, Mr. Matthew Baysmore. What's up, buddy? What's up, Stevie? What's up, everybody? I, I'm I'm really requesting like a some theme music to go along with your introduction to me every time. Well, hey, you're the beat master. Hmm. You you can you can play it in the background. Well, you want to play the Batman theme song? Wait, right? whenever you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no, you know probably, you're uh, probably. Just because I hummed it right then, we'll probably get a, a copyright strike on that. Um, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I'm thinking about, uh, shoot, I have the tiger. Okay, Rocky. <laughs> dun, 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 That's dun. something we need to do, too. We need to we need to do a, uh, a uh, top ten list of uh, – Sports movies. Sports movies. We done. Yes. I've done one before, but I need to hear your list compared to mine. So we need. I to have do right that. many. Oh yeah, it's hard. It's tough to come up with one. It is. Sam, you best believe Sandlot's on my list. He's not supposed to give it away, dude. Oh well, they'll forget by the time we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of news going on in the NFL. Of course, Aaron Rodgers is still with Green Bay for now. They're still. Everybody keeps talking about. Well, it's definitely going to happen. They're just waiting for the Jets to uh, Jets and the Packers to work the deal out. What if it doesn't work out though? What what is what is Aaron Rodgers going to do? Does he retire? Just goes uh, back into hiding. You know, hibernation. Goes back into his darkness chamber. Dark chamber. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to go back into darkness. Like, uh, was it what did they say on uh, Dave Chappelle show? When he does Rick James, he calls Charlie Murphy darkness. Darkness. I guess that's where darkness. Aaron Rodgers goes. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers goes to darkness. Um, but, yeah, there's there's a lot going on, uh, of course. I saw something today. Of course, uh, I don't know if we've uh, we've talked about it since uh, if, if our last show, if we had it. Ezekiel Elliott is gone from the Cowboys. And now there's he's narrowed his list down to three teams. Have you heard about the three teams he's narrowed it down to? I know one of them is the Eagles. Yep. Wouldn't that be now the other two before we go any further? The Jets and the Bengals. So he wants I guess he wants to get some of that um Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he wants to get in with that. Um but if he goes to the Eagles, and I just talked to one of our good buddies a couple of hours ago at a, at a Northeast uh, baseball game, Eric Sawyer, who is a diehard Cowboys fan. I don't know what's wrong with him, but he's that's that's one of the things. He's um, my cousin. He's my cousin. Yeah, he's yeah. He's crazy. You gotta love him. Yeah, you you gotta. Yeah, at least he's not a Patriots fan. Um, True. So, can you imagine him playing for the Eagles? And we talk, you know, in, in podcast past since I've been doing this, there's always been um, – I've always talked about guys that end up in jerseys and just look weird because they're in other teams' jerseys. Can you imagine how weird 
it would be for Cowboy fans to see Zeke in an Eagles jersey. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that, that would be the interesting. Division. The Eagles really need him, though. They do. I think Jalen Hurts would do great with him and uh, yeah. uh, A.J. Brown. Yeah, losing Miles Sanders to the yeah. – uh, which he signed with the Panthers. Um, yeah, I – I think it would be a good move for the Eagles. They really need uh, – and, and it may be a – you know, a change of scenery might do Ezekiel Elliott really good because I think uh, I think he was getting a little complacent in Dallas. I will say this to Cowboy fans out there as a as a outsider looking in, and my, my honest opinion on what happened to Elliott, everybody says, well, he got that money. And he hadn't been the same since. Well, you know, that that could be part of it. The other part I see is Kellen Moore. He was limited. Kellen Moore wanted to push Dak. It was all about Dak. Dak this, Dak that. And his uh, his role in the offense was diminished. Yeah. So, you know, you can say what you want to, but this guy may have – a little bit more gas in this tank than you think. I think it's going to be uh it's going to be interesting to see where it, you know, uh, I, I yeah I hope he doesn't. I don't want to see him in in Cincinnati. You know, let him go to the Jets, let him go to the Eagles, but no. and not that we're scared of him or anything. But you know, the 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 less weapons that uh that he's got that Burrow's got in Cincinnati, the better. Um, because he's going to need some. Um, Did you see that Aaron Rodgers said that he would like Ezekiel Elliott on the Jets with him? Oh yeah, he's that's one of that's why he put his man. He the Jets are one of one of his team. Oh, so that's why. Okay, so that's yeah, that's why, why he's got him got hit the Jets as one of his teams. You go, hmm. Aaron Rodgers wants to wants to do uh, wants a LeBron James a team. He wants to build a super team. He wants to put his his guys in there, and he wants to to go with it. And it's not working out too well for LeBron here lately. But uh, you know, and getting off the subject in NFL for a little bit, I, I saw a headline: New Look Lakers lineup could take LeBron deep into the playoffs. He's not playing. He's <laughs> sitting on the bench like a little baby. Oh, I hurt my knee three weeks ago. Come on, man. This and you know. I see where the NBA is talking about that during the meetings in the offseason. They're going to have to talk about this load management deal where players like LeBron decide they take nights off because of load management. Their load management is too much. They can't. They can't yeah. take it. Well, guess what? You know, do you Jordan never worried about load load management? Magic Johnson never worked about worried about it. Larry Bird didn't. Charles Barkley didn't. They played 82 games. And yep. they were good for it. What, I remember Jordan Jordan played let's see, what year was it? It had to be 96. Played a whole season, went to the NBA Finals, won the Finals. Played in the Olympics. Played all summer in the Olympics. Then came back the next year with the Bulls. Played 82 games that season went to the finals again and won it. So you think he was tired? He he talked about I'm tired, dude. The physical, how do I say this? The physical structure of basketball has changed so much. That, here's what I don't get, and you know I know we're talking NBA and people are like y'all say y'all don't talk about NBA. Well, here's what I don't get: people talk about. You know the ones that the ones that talk want to push like the, these guys are in better shape. These guys these days are in better shape than the guys back then. They're no. they're more physically gifted than what's back then. If that's the case, shouldn't they have no problem playing eighty two games? Exactly, exactly. I mean, what, of what part, I mean, let's do the math here. Something does not add up on that argument. You can't tell me that. Well, yeah, they're they're not playing defense. They're, you know, everything. Everybody wants to shoot a three. It's nobody. They never call traveling anymore. Um, yeah, NBA has become 
a joke. I'm sorry. And NBA fan, if you like the NBA, more power to you. But this guy right here, uh, yeah, I am not buying into the NBA. I want to see a team play defense. I want to see a team yeah. hold another team under 100 points in the NBA. You look at the scores, there's hardly ever – both teams are hardly ever under 100 points. Unless you're the Charlotte Hornets. <laughs> Unless you're just – you got to be terrible. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and and praise the NBA athletes. I'm sorry. But anyway, let's move on. Commanders, the Washington Commanders. Sale looks like it's going to be imminent, and it might be coming really quickly. I saw that Magic Johnson has actually joined a group that's looking to buy the team. Um, Daniel Snyder and his wife, they've cleared all their stuff out. So it looks like it's going to happen soon. And Red Washington fans, I almost said Redskins fans, which that would be fine too. It's still Redskins. <laughs> Washington fans will be happy as a kid at, a little kid at Christmas when that happens. It'll be a new – a new beginning for them, and you know, I think a move in the right direction for them. Um, I, I mean, what do you think? You think, what do you think happens to Daniel Snyder after this? Does he fade into the into the the sunset, and you never hear from him again, or does he? I don't know. What do you it's think? It's hard. To, it's hard to say where I think he'll be because you would think he'll be in prison right now. If it was anybody else, he'd be in prison. He's going to have something coming against him. Yeah, there's, there's a yeah. lot going on out there. I mean, you'd think he'd already be in there with all the mess that's against him. If it was anybody else, I feel like they would be. But I think he's just – I think he's going to fade. If not go to prison, I think he's going to fade out and you won't hear nothing from the Snyder family. Yeah, I I, you know, I think he's going he, – he might buy himself out of jail. Um, he could do it. I mean, yeah, why not? He might. But yeah, commanders. I know uh, Lynn Bryant is is he has already told me. You know, Lynn used to be my co-host on here. Lynn has already told me the day that the sale happens, he wants an emergency podcast that night, <laughs> and he wants to come on and so he can celebrate on the podcast. So. I I'll said, we're all for it, dude. Whenever you want to do it, we'll do it. Whatever happens, we'll do it. Yeah, I'll be here. Yeah. Heck yeah. So, Because uh, Washington's already heading in the right direction. I mean, despite, Well, they got a good uh, defense. They just – and, and yeah. they're, they're building an offense. You know, you got Eric Bieniemy as your offensive coordinator, which yeah. should be uh, – that's going to be a lot of eyes on that. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, Sam, Sam Howell. That's going to be something you're going to have eyes on too, which you know that. And Ron Rivera said Jacoby Brissett came came in, and he's going to be competing for the start job. Come on now, you know, yeah, Sam Howell needs to work for sure. But if you think that the Washington fans are going to get excited because Jacoby Brissett's coming in, and you think he he might win the starting job, then yeah, I mean, nothing against Jacoby Brissett, but. Jacoby Brissett is is a really good backup. Uh, nothing against him, but what I've seen, he's a really good backup. Imagine, um, listen, everybody. Imagine Baker Mayfield going to your favorite team. That's how excited they'll be. Yeah, not really. Well, Tampa Bay, <laughs> Tampa Bay fans. <laughs> Baker Mayfield signs with Tampa Bay. So, yeah. uh, moving on, Lamar Jackson. Still has not signed a his tender, and now there a representative not certified by the NFL Players Association has been contacting teams on behalf of Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson. The NFL sent a memo to all teams on Wednesday instructing them not to negotiate with this person. His name is Ken Francis. And he's attempting per se club personnel to enter in negotiations with or concerning Lamar Jackson. 
And he is not, he said, as an uncertified person, Mr. Francis is prohibited from negotiating offer sheets or player contracts or discussing potential trades on behalf of any NFL player or prospective player or assistant or in advising with respect to such negotiations. So one minute, Lamar is representing himself. Then you got this guy that's not certified and he's trying to negotiate contracts, apparently. So now Lamar J- Jackson has has came out and said that um, – well, how do you say it? In a tweet. Stop lying. That man never tried to negotiate for me. So I, I don't know. And now, you know, Francis has told ESPN.com, I don't speak for Lamar. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. It gets weirder and weirder every week. Excuse me, every week with Lamar Jackson. And at one time, I thought maybe it was going to come to an end because Bill Belichick and the Patriots. But obviously, that's off the table now. Well, they did come out with a, and I don't know if this was this Francis guy uh, that was going to the press or not, but I want to say it was. Monday or Tuesday, there was a report coming out that uh, that Lamar had pretty much given up hopes of being a Raven. That all other teams should that were interested should try to you know negotiate with with him on a on a deal to, to negotiate with the Ravens on a deal. And I don't know if that's what this Francis guy was saying or if it was actually true. So um, and it's saying it's saying. Francis did contact multiple teams in the effort to entice him to pursue Lamar. Now all teams have been told to communicate only with Lamar unless and until he hires a NFL PA certified agent. So I don't know. I, I, I really just wish the whole thing was over. I'm getting tired of hearing about it. You know, either be a Raven or be, be with somebody else. And, you know, I, I, I just hate to see, what a team is going to have to give up and what they're going to have to pay him to get them on their team. They're because, going to have to clear their whole salary cap. I mean, it's getting ridiculous. For the if next he, five years. He, he, he has turned down $133 million guaranteed. I mean – how much more do you want? And and these teams have got to be seeing because you saw when when Baltimore franchise and these teams that were so called interested back started backing off one by one. The Panthers were said to be interested, and now the Panthers, you know, after that, they they go out and trade up to get the number one pick to probably draft either Stroud or Young in the draft and have a franchise quarterback. Um, there's been others, you know, I don't know about the Patriots. I don't know if the Patriots have backed off or not, but you're taking a big risk with this guy. Yes. Yes. You know, a couple years ago or two or three years ago. Yeah. MVP. But now your legs are in question. It's injuries to your knees and your legs over the last two years, you've missed almost half your team's games in the last two years. And you haven't you haven't been you don't you don't make great decisions. Timely, timely turnovers, timely interceptions. Why would a team want to pay you that kind of money and sign you to a long term d- deal when you're 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 getting you're injury prone? I guess unless you could have come back like some people said last the end of last season and you you chose to sit out and and leave your teammates behind that's what some people were saying that he could have probably played and i know he came out and said oh, I, I my my knee is not stable and this and that and the other but you know i don't know it, it's it's going to get interesting to see what happens. And he, after all of this, all this going on, all the hassle, all the the crap, 
he'll probably just stay in Baltimore. You watch. He's going to have to. I mean, he's going to have to take what Baltimore offers him because if not, if he wants to play football and he likes football, he's going to have to because nobody else is going to give up what Baltimore has offered him already, which was, you said, $133 million. That was just guaranteed. Guar- okay, was, yeah, guaranteed. But That still. was the total amount of the contract. That's what's been said now. Nothing official, but yeah. a lot of people were saying he was he was he we had they offered him 133 million dollars guaranteed. Now, a player that doesn't take that makes me think, okay, you don't want to be here. You know, you don't want to be here anymore. So, you know, we're gonna franchise you and you're free to to test the waters and see if you can get a team to uh to give us what we feel like you're worth and to pay you what you feel like you're worth. But there's going to be a lot to give up for a team, any team. And I don't know who out there, who out there, I know the Colts, the Colts came up a lot uh, the last day or two. I kept hearing people talk about the Colts. And I'm going to, I want to look at their depth chart because I know – I know they, uh, you know, Matt Ryan should be gone, which, you know, Matt Ryan's not going to set the world on fire anyway. That Now, the Colts just signed Gardner Minshew. Seen that today. I mean, that, that was last week. And Nick Foles, Nick Foles is the backup. Sam Ellinger is the third string. So, why does the the Lamar Jackson situation? I know it's two different positions, but why does that remind me of the OBJ situation right now? Oh, good lord! That 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 issue right there is ridiculous too. Putting up a qu- a quote, I mean a tweet on Twitter, saying I don't know what the quote is for me, but Ford just ain't it. What happened there was there was a lot of reports coming out that. We're saying OBJ wanted twenty million dollars. Twenty two million. Yeah. And he came out and denied it. Denied it. He yeah. said, I never I don't know where you're getting this twenty two million from. I never said that, but I know I'm worth more than four million. And this is the guy that has torn both ACLs. And hasn't played a whole season. Hasn't since played in a whole year. Has it played since the Super Bowl before last? And a whole season in 2017. That's the yeah. last whole season he's had. And <clears throat> made the comment or insinuated last year that he really didn't want to play regular season games. He just wanted to play postseason Play-up. games. Yeah. Um, would I be in a hurry to sign him? No. Mm-hmm. I would be like, you know, we'll see. You know, you're going to have to, you know, I don't see what the big deal is about the guy. Me either. Just like Lamar, I don't, both players, I don't see what he the big deal is. He was explosive when his first few years with the Giants and his attitude started to overshadow his talent with the Giants before he left. And, you know, I guess he went to Cleveland after that. Cleveland – he kind of showed his butt a little bit with Cleveland, uh, giving Baker Mayfield a hard time. You know, give you know, just saying certain things about what he should be doing in Cleveland, and it's not happening because of personnel around him. And then he goes to the Rams, and I'm kind of like, okay, I'm seeing a new, I'm seeing a new Beckham. You know, he kept his mouth shut. He played, and he kept his mouth shut. He didn't do any of that stupid stuff. But, you know, now I don't see what – if I'm if i an NFL player, no matter how – and believe me, he's not he, – he wasn't really setting the world on fire with the Rams. He was doing, he was doing a good job. You know, they had a good receiving core with him, with uh, Cup, and with the others. But he wasn't, like, putting up great numbers like, every game. Yeah. So I'm 
playing above average in the NFL. I tear my ACL. I'm out a whole year. What ha- In the old days, bud, th- that would have been a guy that was trying to prove himself again, that was trying to say, hey, look, yeah, I'll take – I'll take a one year deal and I'll take it for, for less than what I usually make. But I, once I prove myself again, it's on, you know, if I prove myself and I have a all pro year, it's on, you're going to have to pay me if you want to keep me. And that's fine. Like and that, I have no problem with that, yeah. but you know, sitting up here making demands when you haven't played in a whole year, like, Oh gosh. Yeah. I, I, I know I'm worth more than four, which maybe he is, but you know, I don't know. He, he's got to prove himself. No, nobody wants to prove himself anymore. Everybody just wants it like, okay, this is what I'm worth. You need to give it to me. Yeah. And then how many times have you seen a player work his butt off on that contract year? And then after he gets that big contract, he goes all to pieces. He doesn't have – he doesn't have a, a, a good season anymore. Tate, case in Joe point. Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco. Yeah. MVP year. Played probably one of the best postseason a quarterback has ever played in NFL history. And then goes to crap after he gets that big contract. Which he deserved, you know, and I mean, do we, did he deserve the contract? Yes, he proved that he deserved. But you lose that. I guess you lose that determination, that hunger to, to be like, okay, this is my contract year. I got to play. Why can't you play like that every year? Why can't you put that into every year? There's been so many. And I mean, I, I was picking on Flacco because he's a Raven, but uh, he's a, he's a, probably the last one I remember. There's been a lot of them. But he's probably the last one I remember. Dude, I hope Daniel Jones ain't next. <laughs> That's what we talked and we talked about that. We yeah. talked about that when he signed that contract. Is that determination going to be there like it was last year? Better. Or is he going to say, "Okay, I've got I've I've achieved what I wanted to. I got my big contract. That's that's going to be it." I don't know. It, it remains to be seen. Speaking of uh <laughs> Speaking of quarterbacks with big egos, Cam Newton, back in the news. Who? No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Cam Newton. Superman. Yes, came out earlier in the week, said he was going to throw for NFL scouts at Auburn's Pro Day. And his quote was, I know – I, there, there ain't 32 – all 32 MF is better than me, talking about NFL quarterbacks right now. So, how'd he do? Not too good. <laughs> he was – his accuracy was off. He missed wide open receivers. And this is without a pass rush in his face. Sometimes you just got to – you just got to know when – what is that? The gambler. Kenny Rogers, know when to hold them, know when to fold them. We'll and, hold them. You know, Cam needs probably needs to fold them now. He needs to – I don't know. I don't know. What do you do? What kind of career does Cam Newton have? Is he a coach? Is he a fashion consultant? No, he's not a fashion consultant because if you watched his, his press conference. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean – Neither one. I, um, he, he's not – man. Hoping the Cam Newton fans up here, but he's not capable of being that much of a leader as a coach. He's not mature enough, I don't think. No, I can't. I I really can't see him being a coach. Um, yeah, I, I don't see, like you said, the maturity to yeah. be a coach. Uh, not yet, at least. I mean, I don't know how old Cam Newton is, but. He's got to be in his thirties. Early. 30s. He's got to be in his thirties. Let me see. Yeah. Cam Newton. <laughs> Somebody saying one of the headlines up here says Cam Newton puts on a show. 
Cam Newton's Auburn Pro Day wideout. He still has it. No. No, he, he don't. Was, he's, he's 33 years old. Yeah, he was born in 89. Yeah, I, I I just don't – I mean, yeah, I was kind of surprised last year that nobody really gave him a, gave him a shot last year. Uh, but now, being out I for a year, late. being out for a year, I just don't see it. How, it's hard. I mean, it's hard, dude, when, you, when you're out of the NFL for a whole year. Because, you know, everybody says – oh, excuse me. Everybody says, I'm in – no, I've, I've kept in good shape – but you're not in football shape. You're not in that football field shape. You know what I mean? If you can't hit a receiver without pass or without uh pass rushers, I no. No. You can't even pass the scouts. Yeah, I, I mean on a pro day, you you really to give a performance like they say he did. You know, I guess there is conflicting. Uh, some people say he's he did a great job. And some people are saying, no, he didn't. He didn't do bad. I mean, I think. But is it is it NFL quarterback caliber? Oh, to my – I'm talking about him on his pro goal. day. No, he didn't have a bad career by any means. He's a former that. NFL MVP. You know, he led Carolina to a 15 and 1 record. No, I don't take anything away from him there. But, you know, 35 touchdowns in that year, his MVP year, 10 interceptions, 3,800 yards passing. And then, how many, how many rushing touchdowns did he have? That year, he had ten rushing touchdowns. So he had forty-five. He was he was a, a part of forty-five touchdowns that year in two thousand fifteen. Definitely deserved to yeah, be. I mean, that's impressive, but that's two thousand fifteen. Yeah, and what happened after that? Things went downhill. Um, they had one good year, two thousand seventeen. After that, he uh, I no, he's a guy ran for seven hundred fifty yards or two to. 2017, but his touchdown numbers went down dramatically. The next year, 19 touchdowns passes in 22 to 24 before he, you know, he missed a whole, just almost a whole year with Carolina. And then after that, the last two years between New England and Carolina, uh, 12 touchdowns and, and 15 interceptions. So, I think after that Super Bowl loss, I think his ego just went. Just well, went a lot away. of people gave him a hard time about the fumble, not going after the fumble, saying he was not, uh, he was not giving his all for for the team, and uh, and especially in that situation in the Super Bowl, you know, that's when you you want to go all out. He didn't get down and dirty on the ground to try to recover that fumble when the. Uh, the Broncos end up getting it, and it's pretty much a, a key key point of that game where that did it. So, yeah, Cam Newton. Some people call him Scam Newton, but uh, we're not going to do that to him. Um, Damn Newton. Austin Eckler. You know who he is, right? Yes. He, he came out and told the Chargers he wanted – a trade. He wanted permission to have a trade. Now he's made it clear he like a new long term deal that's equal with his own field production. He was on a, the uh, Green Light with Chris Long podcast the other day, and this is what he said: "It's really important to put it out there. That it's not. It's not like oh, I hate the Chargers and I need to get out of this organization. So I need to leave. That couldn't be further from the truth." I would like to stay if it was under the right circumstances. He also added, I feel like there's no timeline on a trade. I'm so underpaid right now as far as my contract and what I contribute to the team. I am relentlessly pursuing this. I want to get something done. Uh, he signed a four-year, $24.5 million 
dollar deal with the Chargers ahead of 2020 year, and that should uh, expire at the end of this year, and we'll pay him six point two five million. If there's an opportunity to get more value, then why would you not jump on that? Why would you not at least try out the options? And worst case scenario, it's not even a worst case really. But okay, go play on that last year. Your deal in LA, then become a free agent. So, looking at his stats, scrimmage total TDs 2021, 2022, 38, and 30, 3,195 scrimmage yards from scrimmage. So, comparing that to, uh, let's look. We're comparing it down here to uh, Christian McCaffrey. Okay, let's compare it to him first. He's got six. He's making sixteen million. He's had fifteen touchdowns from scrimmage, two thousand six hundred sixty-five yards from scrimmage. Alvin Kamara, fifteen million dollar contract, thirteen scrimmage TDs, twenty-seven hundred twenty-four. So. The only one close to him as far as scrimmage TDs is Joe Mixon, and he gets $12 million. The only one close to him as far as yardage and hasn't beaten in scrimmage yardage is Nick Chubb. He gets $12.2 million. So I don't blame this guy. I would be – I would be – Wanting a new contract too. Yeah. Pay me what I'm worth. You know, don't don't sit there and and use me up and then throw me out to dry. Pay me what I'm worth. You know, Austin Eckler is. I would love to have him in Pittsburgh. And the Chargers, you know, if, if you're a Chargers fan, you need to be hoping and praying that they can work something out with Austin Eckler because I think. Uh, I think that's gonna gonna hurt them more than a little bit if they lose him. Because they ain't got no backups. No. No. Who can you name the backup for the Chargers? No, I don't think anybody can. Let's see who their backup is. Let's look at their depth chart. And you know, and Justin Herbert would I'm sure he's like, we need to get this done. With this guy, because that guy means a lot to him. Yeah. Okay. Backup running back, Joshua Kelly. And then Isaiah Spiller. He's from Texas A&M. I remember him from college. Yeah, I've heard of him, too. Larry Roundtree the third is the fourth backup. So, yeah. All pro names right there, bud. They've proven themselves in the NFL. And, you know, you never know. One guy – I could see if maybe this Kelly guy had had a really good year and they were like, you know, you know, Eckler can can see – he can get a trade. We're going to put all our money on Joshua Kelly. But let's look at Joshua Kelly's stats. 287 yards rushing, two touchdowns. No, that's not an all-pro yeah, that's season. That's not, no. that's not somebody – that you get excited about. Yeah, like thinking I can trade away Austin Eckler and we'll be fine without him. No. Oh, but Chargers, you need to get on the stick because you're gonna you're gonna upset your fan base. Um just looking at something right here, there, you know, they always do the rule changes, and they make proposal on rule changes. And in the annual meetings, and I think that's next week. And the full set of proposed rule changes for next week's annual meetings from teams and from the competition committee do not include a rule prohibiting teammates from pushing the ball carrier. And that was one thing that a lot of people would, you know, especially with the Eagles. The Eagles do it better than, yeah. than anybody. Or the quarterback sneak, they'll get, you'll see the guys get back there and they'll push the guy. And, uh, you know, Sean Payton was one of them that spoke out, the new Broncos coach, spoke out, said he was going to get try to get it outlawed. 
and they'll try to get a rule against it. But evidently, unless the owners do it, unless the owners bring it up in the meetings, it will not be on the agenda this year. So, I don't see no problem with it. I really don't. You know, I don't see any problem with it either. But, you know, we I remember the first year I coached, I was a head coach over at Northeast. We did it, you know, we had a guy that would get in the backfield and he was he usually wasn't in the backfield and he would push the quarterback and we got called for it one time because they would they would say that's illegal you can't do that and i was like since when i mean we've been doing this forever so i guess it's just what depends on what referees you get yeah um but yeah that that's that's not going to be on the agenda what about the um the um hit from the side See that it doesn't give a list of what it is. I hope that's okay. not on the list because if that's the case, and they might as well just put flags around their waist and play flag yeah. football because that's ridiculous. Uh, some of the stuff they were talking about is it, it, insane. I, I don't get it. Hopefully, that will not be an issue there. If um, it is, you might as well count the. The regular season looking like the uh, Pro Bowls. Yeah, why well, they just play – you go play dodgeball. <laughs> no, because then the ball is going to make contact with them, and that's going to make a boo-boo. Yeah, I mean, and they were even <laughs> – they even didn't want them to get hit in the – I think it, they got hit in the face or something like that. They got hit in the head or something like that in dodgeball. It was not legal. So, yeah. All right. Let's talk a little bit. Another move that was made this week. Of course, we talked about Adam Thielen was a longtime Minnesota Viking, uh, was cut last week. I guess it was last week. Yeah. Well, never fear. Uh, Adam Thielen has signed with the new team, and it's the Carolina Panthers, which I thought was a great move by the Panthers. Yes. The Panthers, the Panthers are slowly, well, maybe. Maybe not slowly, but no. they're they're putting together pieces to a team to build around whichever quarterback they take with that number one pick, whether it's Stroud or Young. They're putting pieces in place to uh, – they mean business. I mean, they're tired of being the Carolina Panthers that um, everybody talks about, well, you know, they're, they're the Panthers. They haven't been good since 2015 and blah, blah, and all this. They're ready – to uh, take that step in the right direction and be a team that contends for the Super Bowl. And, you know, Adam Thielen ha has had some great years. Is he – Is he? Pa maybe he's past his prime? I don't know. Didn't have a great year with Minnesota last year, but, you know, you got Justin Jefferson. He's not going to be the number one receiver with Justin Jefferson there. Yeah. Uh, so, good move by the Panthers, I think. I was a good pickup. I was I was really on, uh, on the boat with that one. Uh, and McKinley Jordan, he was happy. He he we we texted back and forth about that uh, when it happened. Other he said, uh, "Me and him will be best friends now." I, so McKinley, we have to ask you if you listen, are you going to be a Carolina Panthers fan now? Because he said Thielen was his favorite player, all time favorite player with the uh, with the uh, Vikings. He's a big time Vikings fan. So we'll see if he ends up. Turning. All right. Good move by the Panthers. Long time, and I, you know I don't like to talk about the Patriots too much, but here we go. Long time linebacker for the Patriots, Dante Hightower, retired this week. Three-time Super Bowl champion, and, man, I as much as I despised the, uh, the Patriots, that guy – was a beast in his day. I hated that guy's way he – I mean, he played hard. He was going to be the one to uh, to uh, lead the way for the Patriots. And, you know, he was the one, if you remember, that made one of the biggest plays in the Super Bowl when they came back against the uh, Falcons. He, he got the, the strip sack. That led to a touchdown, one of the touchdowns that he came back. But uh, Hightower drafted in 2012 out of Alabama. 
Uh, 33-year-old, he did not play last year. 2022, he was not signed to any team. And I'm sure he will sign a – they'll sign him to a, like a one-day contract with the Patriots and he retires a Patriot. Uh, he was a key piece of New England's defensive success for nine seasons, two pro bowls, won three Super Bowls, and uh, finished his career with 569 combined tackles, 27 sacks, 43 tackles for loss, one interception and two touchdowns. His tackle mark ranked sixth in franchise history. So definitely one of the uh, one of the leaders of that Patriots defense over the last uh, 12 years with in it with the uh with the Belichick, but uh Dante Hightower retires from the Patriots. You remember him much, Matthew? You, you, yeah, yeah, I remember the game. game. I, I remember the Falcons game, and I remember that the whole strip sack. How bad played against us in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I. I I figured you would bring that up. Yeah, of course. He was yeah. there when, when we beat them in the Super Bowl, when we ended their <laughs> perfect season. Happy retirement, Bubba. Yeah. And just go back home and watch those uh, Patriots Giant Super Bowls. Watch the tape. You could have had and six. It, you know, one of the last things I want to talk about, and this story, let me see if I can bring the story up right quick. Because this kind of. It makes you made you think about this. I'm having a hard time pulling this up right now, but I definitely where is it at? I just had it up here. All right, hold on. Okay. Free agent tight end. Foster Moreau. I hope I'm not butchering his name, but announced he he was with the Raiders, but he had signed a free agent deal with the Saints. And he announced his physical with the Saints revealed that he has Hodgkin's lymphoma and he'll now be stepping away from football. That being said, Moreau said, I'll go kick this thing's ass and get back to doing what I love. So you think about that. What is that? It's it's a form of cancer. Oh, uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, I I I don't know what the recovery. I think it's got a pretty good recovery rate because there was a uh, there was a former wrestler that has been at Rage Wrestling. If you people haven't around this area know what Rage Wrestling is. Um, he he did his testimony at Rage Wrestling, and his name's Chuck Coates. He is a three-time cancer survivor, and I think this is what he had too was Hodgkin's lymphoma. So it might be treatable if caught early. Um, uh, so hopefully, hopefully he'll he'll beat this thing, yeah. and uh, he'll get back to playing football. He said. He didn't announce his retirement, but his NFL future certainly remains up in the air. And hopefully, you know, you, I mean, you don't want to see a guy go out like that. But thank no. God that he had signed with with the Saints and had that physical because who knows how long it would have took for them to, to find out what it, that he had this. But you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I thought you'd gone to sleep on me. No, not yet. Not yet. Hey, yeah, Matthew. Not yet. Matthew. Both of us, both of us have, have had, a, had a rough, rough week this week, a busy week, and uh, we're pretty tired. So we will do next week. We'll come back with our, uh, with our top five touchdown celebrations, which I've got, I've got my list, and it's going to probably surprise some people what number one is for me. I can only imagine. And I'll tell you, it's not a Steelers. It's not anything to do with the Steelers. No, I didn't. That's not the one I had in mind. What do you got in mind? Your Mr. Uh, Antonio Brown's touchdown. No, no. (laughs) He is not. 
<laughs> not anywhere on my list. I can go ahead and tell you that. Oh, come on, man. I'm serious. He is not on my list. I believe he's not, he ain't on mine either. Well, I figured that. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it should be interesting next week to figure it. Any anything you got before we get out of here, Matthew? Besides I want to go to bed. <laughs> no. I want to see more likes and comments and shares and stuff and me well, and Steve will work while. hard and get prepared to do all this and show us some love, man. Yeah, show us a little love if you can. We don't ask you for money or anything like that. We just ask for you to if you like what you hear. Give us a five star review. Um, go on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to this at, and give us that five star review. Uh, if you would, also go to YouTube and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Easy to find. You find the final score, it's right up there. Um, and just, yeah, we do work hard. We've got some things we're working on in, in the future. That uh, some interviews, uh, some top 10 lists, uh, stuff like that, some st- different stuff that we're going to do to keep you guys entertained. But tonight we just felt like we need to do a little, uh, what did I call it, Matthew? Smorgasbord. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but I don't know that English. Can you spell that for me? You talk about no. me. Can you spell that? No, guy, I ain't the one that said it. <laughs> well, I mean, I ain't no- can you spell every word you say? Say it, say the word again. I might. Well, I'm sure there's some words say, you can't you, that say, you said you can't say it again. Smorgasbord. Oh man, all I heard was s'mores. Horse. <laughs> Smorgasbord, <laughs> buddy. Smorgasbord. I don't. Know, I probably couldn't spell it right either. Um, yeah, well, th- thankfully, this is a sports podcast, not spelling. Yeah, it's not a spelling bee, <laughs> so yeah. we don't have to worry about that. I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking at it, see if there's anything before we go. Yeah, and now there, there's a report coming out that maybe the Ezekiel Elliott's wish list may not be a mutual list. Uh, he may not have offers from any of those at this point. He may never get an offer from any of them. This is simply the list of teams he wants to play for. So maybe we're – Maybe we're uh, the Eagles thing is not going to work out. He probably just said the Eagles thing because he wants to get back at it at the Cowboys. Yeah, so. or the, the same division NFCs. You know, what do you uh, what do you what would you do if they said, okay, we're going to sign Ezekiel Elliott as Saquon's backup? Dude, it won't be a bad idea. Oh gosh! Look, it, it won't. I don't have nothing against. Only thing I had against Ezekiel Elliott was the jersey he was wearing. The jersey he was wearing. Yes, sir. So, who is your most disliked NFL player that you don't you you really don't like? <laughs> um, a long list. Long list. I mean, there's one. There's one got to be one out there that you just can't, I can't stand that guy. Could I be passed, not. could be retired. It don't matter. He don't have to be playing now. I do not. I do not like Lamar Jackson, of course. Okay, that's one. He's always the one that pops up. And I do not like – Um, damn, I don't even remember his name. That's how much I don't like him. Uh, uh Matt. Quarterback for the Patriots. Mac Jones? Mac Jones, yeah. All right. So let's say let's say that the Giants don't sign Daniel Jones. And guess what? We just signed Mac Jones to a multi year contract. We put we put the Giants jersey on Mac Jones. How do you feel about Mac Jones now? I mean, I wish the best for him, but golly, it'd be, it'd be bad. I wish the best for him. I like that. I wish, I wish the, the best, best for him. I really do. But, I mean, I'd rather for him to stay with the Patriots. Yeah, I got you. you know, or, go rather to, or, go, or, or go to Pittsburgh. Mm. 
<laughs> yeah, there's been some guys that uh, I can honestly say that might be a that might be a good idea for a show. Who is one player that has played for your your team that you really didn't like? You know, that could be hard to figure out. I know it will for you because you you as long as they wear a giant jersey, you love them like sliced bread. But Yes, sir. Especially that thick sunbeam sliced bread. Oh, thick man. sunbeam. Yeah. You, yes, sir. Thick sunbeam sliced bread. Okay. <laughs> anyway. All right, Matthew. Last last chance before we get out of here. I ain't got nothing. Thank you all for listening. Got nothing. I ain't got nothing. Anyway, guys, next week we'll we'll be back with our, like I said, our top five uh NFL touchdown celebrations, and uh, we will not be doing the smorgasbord next week. But you guys have a great week. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the for your comments, and uh, we'll see you next week on the final score.